I just finished a 2,000 mile road trip in this 2020 Hyundai Santa Fe. And first things first, I gotta give it credit. Zero mechanical issues, not even a flat tire or anything. I went through some crazy terrain, tons of cargo space. I even put a full mountain bike in the back, put the seats down, lots of cargo. It did everything I asked it to do. Now, that being said, I did have some problems that I think are more related to Hyundai in general because this is the second Hyundai I've driven this year. And a lot of those same issues I had with the first one, I found in this one. Now that first one was an Elantra. I'll put the link to that up in the top here. That was a 2022 model, the newest design. And this is a 2020, so a couple years older. Uh, they have lightly refreshed this model since then. I hope that they've addressed some of the issues I've found. But before I get into those issues, if you would do me a favor, like this video if you do like it subscribe to the channel it's at car snubs uh anything you do helps to create more great car content and if you got any cars you'd like me to check out put them down in the comments below as well with that out of the way let's get into the things i didn't like about this car it revolves around hyundai's safety systems now like most modern cars at least above 25,000, 30,000 or so you're going to get forward collision alert uh, radar cruise control and lane keep assist. All three of those I just don't like in this car. First off, let's start with my biggest pet peeve that I found on the road trip, which you use a lot because when you're on a road trip, you're in a lot of desolate areas and you want a good cruise control system. This one is one of the worst ones I've ever used. Here's multiple examples of the cruise control on this Hyundai Santa Fe. Hyundai tech makes me so crazy. I got it set at 82. I'm trying to get around this semi. You get in the other lane where it's wide open, it slows down even more. It's like you're hitting the brakes when the field is totally clear. I don't understand why the car slows down every time I go around a large vehicle. It doesn't seem to happen on normal sized cars, but when you go around a semi or anything very large, it slows down when you get in the open lane. It's driving me insane. And this is slightly confusing, wide open freeway. I just crossed into the state of Oregon from California. And when you go to hit the cruise, turn it on, when you hit resume, it tells you this, smart cruise control conditions not met. Well, I guess it's because there's no memory of a speed because the car was shut off and this is the first time the cruise control's on. So if you hit set, it will then set it. But just a little odd that I didn't know what that meant. One final thing on the cruise. All right, it's a flat road, plenty of space in front of me. I have it set for 77 miles an hour, but the car just doesn't want to keep it at 77. You can see there it just went down to 76 and it's back to 76. For some reason, this car has a lot of problems just keeping it at the same speed. Sometimes it'll drop one or even two miles per hour different. I know it's not a big difference in speed, but when you're looking down, and you have the car set for 77 and it's doing 76, it really bumps you. And the lane keep assist on this car is a little bit scary, honestly. It's not as bad as the Elantra I drove. That felt like a computer was taking over the car, like it was a horror movie where it's just gonna drive you off a cliff or something. This one, a little less aggressive, but still too aggressive for my liking. It's, I don't know, maybe I'm just not ready for the cars to be taken over by computers yet. This one is either, it steers for you or it doesn't. It's either 100% on or 100% off. I chose to use it 100% off for this entire road trip. It's called Lane Keep Assist to assist you to stay in the lane. But this one is adamant about taking over the wheel. I don't know if we're gonna be able to see it on this road. It does have good markings, but there's only a center line and no white line on the right. So I'm not sure how the system's gonna react to this. It's a pretty quiet road. So I'm gonna try to just maybe casually go over the center line, see what happens. It's actually not even catching it on here. So the only indicator you really have is in your screen up front here. It just stays white though, so you don't really know if the system has caught the lane or not. A lot of them like to show a different color. Let's go over the side here, see what happens. Traffic coming, so we should not do that. Here's a good little section, even with some barriers. So let's see if it finds it here. We'll go over to the side. It, it does then flash yellow and warn you, but it jerks the wheel like like pretty hard like that like it's it's i don't know it, it bumps you because like right now it feels like a robot's driving the car and i really don't like that feeling and unfortunately there's no option just to warn you some cars will shake the steering wheel and say hey keep it in the lane but won't actually steer it out of the lane this one is all or nothing 
So I choose to go nothing with the Hyundai Lane Keep Assist. And the one that could have been the worst situation I wasn't able to capture on video, it was with the forward collision system. It went off for no reason. So here's what happened. I was at a red light. There was a car in front of me. Light turns green. Car in front of me starts going. I start going. Well, the car in front of me is at least 20 to 30 feet away at this point when something must have been caught on this system where it thought there was an object right in front of me and it slammed 100% on the brakes. If you've ever had a forward collision alert go off, you know that those brakes hit really hard, like even harder than your foot could even stomp on the brakes. Well, there was a car right behind me. Luckily, it was like a brand new Lexus. So I assumed that that car also had its forward collision go off too. Otherwise, I think that I would have got hit in the rear end of this car. It was kind of freaky because I don't know what the car saw, but there was nothing in front of me when it slammed on the brakes. I think that's a major safety issue for Hyundai. And I looked online if this is happening to other people, and it turns out it's happened quite a few times. It really made me not trust the forward collision system, a system that is actually designed to really prevent accidents. And there's been studies proven that it does prevent accidents. When you have it go off for no reason, you're really skeptical about whether it works or not. Now, I didn't dig too deep into the car to try to shut it off, but I don't think there's an option to 100% shut it off. I could be wrong. I'm actually gonna look into that right now. Just confirming that I can't find any way to turn off forward collision in the menus here. If I'm wrong, please let me know in the comments below. But the other safety systems are controlled down here. You got blind spot monitoring and avoidance. Uh, lane keep assist and traction control. It's the only options I'm seeing. And in closing, I just want to reiterate that I really like this car. I did 2000 miles in it. It was comfortable. The interior was pretty nice and it had a lot of good cargo space and they didn't unnecessarily shove a third row seat in the back like a lot of manufacturers are doing. To have this car been made five years earlier, this would have been right at the top of my list of SUVs to get. But unfortunately, we expect those safety features in modern cars and we expect them to work. These are no good if you put them in and they don't work properly. I could just see a lot of people buying this car, spending the extra money to get the extra safety tech and then realizing that they don't like it and they just shut it off.